What up everybody, it's Royal Blue Effects here. Welcome to our channel. If you haven't already, please, please, please subscribe to this channel because we do leave a lot of good content here for your learning. It's all free, obviously, and obviously helps out the channel. So without any further ado, let's begin with this video. So in uh, this video, we're going to do a trade recap on GJ, all right? Um, I was, uh, here's the funny story here for you guys. I was looking for a uh, long here. I was looking for a, a, a bullish uh, buy here. And I don't know what happened. I didn't leave any um, any notifications on this uh, area right here for me to buy. Unfortunately, I was looking for this trade here on the four hour. Um, as you can see, I actually no, it was on the four. It was the daily. I went on the daily time frame like this, and then I noticed that price was all bullish, right? And so I told myself, okay, cool. Um, I saw that there was a, a price broke bullish here. Price mitigated this high here, so we're looking for price to go bearish. Once price goes bearish, we're looking for buys in and around this area. As you can see, that there's a major order block right there um, on the daily time frame. Although this order block is way too big, so obviously I um, scaled all the way down to the lower time frames to find out my exact order block where that order block would have been. Um, I went all the way down to the one hour. I zoomed out all the way to the left here, if I can find it right there. Okay, I noticed that we had the extreme high and the extreme low, and price came over here, uh, tagged our supply zone, then uh, all of a sudden flipped and pushed bullish. Then I came and scoped out this area to find out, okay, well, let's see what broke this area, this, uh, this supply zone here. Then I noticed, if you zoom in here, you can see price, this low here mitigated everything here, uh, this demand area right here, okay? That was our demand area right here. So I was saying to myself, okay, well, if this is mitigated, then price touched and then pushed bullish again here. Where's that last area uh, that price hasn't mitigated yet, right? I'm looking for that needle in the haystack, all right? Um, so once we zoomed in here, you can see price uh, broke bullish here, right? Flipped, tagged this uh, order block here and pushed bullish. But then what I noticed was when you go all the way down here, you can see there's this huge wick, all right? This huge wick right here that wasn't mitigated, right? This is our extreme. So obviously I kept going all the way down to lower time frames to really find uh, our order block. And um, you don't have to keep going lower and lower, obviously, but I, do it. I did it for my own sanity just because I like to be exact, to know where exactly these trades are gonna go. And so, um, yeah, and so once price tapped here, uh, I was un I was away from my desk at that time. I don't know what I was doing. Obviously, I didn't even have my um, my order uh, my um, what is it my notification here, so I didn't get tapped in. And as you can see, price just went bullish, and then this was my TP my supply zone right here. So I re you know. Uh, I kind of regret this trade, but anyway, I just wanted to tell you that that story to you guys. But uh, to move further on here, um, I once price is going bullish, I knew price had to go bullish uh, again here. So what I did was I uh, I wanted to scalp, right? I saw uh, this area here at this point in time on the one hour. I marked out my highs and lows. Right there you can see my low and my high, right? Price was just going like this, obviously. Oops, give me a second, excuse me. Okay, um, and then I was gonna be scalping this day. So I looked at this area here and I pretty much marked out everything I could see here, um, but um, I didn't take any long trades from here at this point. I dropped all the way down to the five second, let me, sorry, five minute. Let me go all the way down here so I can show you guys quickly what I did. Okay, so price was out of here, okay. So here we go. So I noticed here uh, we had liquidity resting below, and then price from this low pushed all the way high here, and it went all the way to this supply zone. My anticipation is, you know, if you know how if you know how we trade, right? My anticipation was okay. We'll just wait for price to push all the way back down, and once and we'll see what price does. Once price came here to the supply air, uh, this demand area, excuse me, I saw that price uh, there was a rejection of this uh, demand. And then price pushed up, gave us that beautiful chalk right over here. Right there, right? Here's our chalk, right? Price came and mitigated this high here and pushed right back. 
So I was telling myself, all right, fair enough. What are we seeing here? This is this is uh, what we saw at this point in time when price was here. I scaled all the way down to the one minute and I was looking for buys. The reason why I was looking for buys is because we rejected this demand area and price was still pushing bullish. Uh, we still haven't fully mitigated the order block, which is this right here. Okay, right over here. Right there. So my anticipation was still going bullish from here. Um, we see that this low was rejected by this low here. So price is uh, essentially pushing bullish, right? So we were just going with the order flow, where the order flow of the market was. Um, if you're in our uh, course, obviously, if you're in our community, uh, trading community, you'll understand why we're looking for buys here and not sells and how we were able to take these buys, obviously. Um, and so once I saw price here, rejecting the supply zone here, price came down and I was like, all right, cool. I could have taken a buy here, but I didn't because I could see that I was waiting for another test, essentially. I dropped all the way down to the 15 seconds here. And as you can see, I marked my, my high and my low here, so I know I'm working with this range in here. And then I could see clearly, right over here, this high here mitigated that, that order block. And price pushed bearish all the way down here. Okay, excuse me pushed all the way here. I didn't take a buy here, but there we have that flip right here. As soon as that as soon as that uh, push bullish, I then told myself, okay, well, I know we're looking for buys, so we wait for price to come back, right? I went all the way down to the five seconds because I entered on the five seconds. And this is kind of interesting. Um, here, I waited for price to come in, uh, mitigate this uh, blank space here. Now, if you guys don't know what these blank spaces are, they're essentially where price just sort of um, jumps over right and price hasn't filled in it wasn't filled in right and if you guys understand imbalance price needs to fill that imbalance uh, imbalance in the sense is really just a candle that has a uh, price where price hasn't come and filled in this candle right uh, there's inefficiency there where price needs to come in and fill in those gaps right even these actual gaps not just candles that don't have any wicks in them or any bodies you know laying in them like this right but physically an actual gap that needs to be filled so my anticipation was all right well i see that there's a high there and that there's a low here and now we are waiting for price to come into this area right into this order block essentially this is the order block on the higher time frame so this gave me an idea that this is where price is going to come and mitigate and or close and to fill in that gap so we were just waiting patiently for price to get over there um, until that time I wasn't going to do anything right so once price got is getting to this level here notice how we weren't looking for any sells or anything we were just looking for buys at this point because we know price is bullish price tapped in as you can see right over here right it clearly closed in the gap here and now I didn't I didn't take a snipe entry on here because obviously this would be our uh, very uh, it would be an aggressive trade right I was waiting for more I was waiting for more confirmation the confirmation that we got was this area here with price rejected this high I was gonna look for an immediate buy here and then as you can see there's your buy our buy uh, happened there and then um, excuse me it wasn't there I'm sorry I waited for price to give us a chalk first right over here Okay, so price gave us that chalk. Um, this high here mitigated this high here. Okay, and and then once price broke bullish, this is my this is my train of thought. I was like, okay, well, price broke bullish. It left so much inefficiency in here. Price needed to come here and mitigate. And once price mitigated, I took a buy immediately. Now, obviously, in this area, I was kind of thinking to myself, okay, well, this is. Price is just going consolidating here. I know it shouldn't go bearish here. It should go bullish. Um, we just stuck to it, honestly, and um, uh, the price started to work out on its own. Uh, there was a lot of consolidation here. I was kind of getting a little worried now at this point. Uh, as a, I'm a human, obviously, um, but uh, I was entrusting my process. And um, price then broke bullish like this, and uh, then I stopped fearing the trade. Um, but uh, in any case, uh, we knew price should have gone bull had to go bullish because this high here mitigated this zone here, the supply zone. When generally price breaks and mitigates the supply zone, you just wait for price to either uh, retrace, uh, 
retrace fully uh, to come to an area of demand, and then you would take that buy, right? Um, so we took, we stayed in this buy, fully entrusting the process. We uh, were trying to see if there's any evidence where price could, if price is going to, um, oops, something's happening here with this. Okay, there we go. Um, we were trying to see if there's any evidence that price would stop at a supply area, right? And there you go, right? Price just breaks through. Uh, obviously, you can see there's so much liquidity on this area resting. So it gave us also the benefit of the doubt that price should continue up and take out take out all that uh, liquidity. And knowing that we were bullish already on the bullish order flow, we were it just made sense to, to us, right? You can see here at this low, we were marking up this area of uh, this order block here. Price never tapped there. And so we were just like, okay, well, price is going bullish, right? So what I also did here was, um, you can see here, we had this high, this low, this high, and this low, right? This high here, price broke through it, and guess what happened here? Price left some imbalance, right? I mean, you can see this whole entire area here, there's, whole, there's all imbalance on this huge move, right? But if you're thinking typically how the market works, right, if there's a gap, it has to fill that gap in, like no matter what, it has, it, 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 to me, these gaps are more priority than the rest of this inefficiency, right? That's happening. So gaps are more important. So and I know, I knew, and I knew this would be a flip essentially. So what did I do? I took a, an aggressive entry, to be honest, here, and we looked to tap this area of supply right at the high here. And why were we tapping this? Why were we targeting the supply area? Well, because you'll see here, this is an unmitigated area. Price mitigated here already. As you can see, if we just do this, price mitigated this high, uh, but what we're typically looking to target was this high and finish here. Um, essentially, I wanted to really target this extreme high here, but you know, as they as the going say, you know, you can't be greedy in the market, so you just got to get what you you know what what you can see in the market and be done and get out. So we stayed in this mark in this trade. Obviously, I got a little freaked out. Price was going bearish, but then I was like, oh, "Don't fear." We're just following order flow, right? You can see if you zoom in here, we had a flip that happened here. Okay, from this high right here, you can see price stopped here, left this little uh, little imbalance, a little almost like a little blank spot here, and then price just pushed up. So we knew that this was our buy, and without a doubt. Um, we weren't fearing anything. We were like, okay, this is our, this is it. We're done here, and we hit TP on both of the trades, and we we're out. Um, obviously, these two trades are very aggressive. One thing you really need to be doing uh, is really understand when you're on lower time frame entries. Uh, sorry, when you're on a lower time frame, you need to be looking for. You don't necessarily need confirmation all the time, um, unless you know what you're looking for, right? Unless you see that order flow pushing bullish, like this, for example, here. We were expected for markets to come here, obviously, but they didn't happen. That didn't happen because they're, they left a blank area, left, uh, uh, a blank spot there. So we knew price was going bullish from here. So and then once this low created, this new high created, I knew for a fact that price needed to go uh, retrace back and come and mitigate this entire uh, supply zone for us to uh, finish the trade, I guess. Um, and that's why I was taking these trades very aggressively because I knew price had to go up there and we were just following order flow. Um, if we move a little forward here, uh, I was just kind of waiting for price to do something right now, right? I knew we were still bullish because even though price mitigated the supply, um, it mitigated this area of supply in this order block here, we can see we're following order flow. We're still bullish here. I didn't take any buys here yet, although I could have. Notice how price came and tapped, fully tapped that um, order block here. It actually filled in the gap. This one, however, didn't fill in the gap. And as I mentioned, if you guys know, if you guys, uh, you know, those for those that uh, are taking my course, or for those that aren't taking my course, you'll see that, um, you know, this order block still needs to be, uh, there's two types of mitigation. This is one type of mitigation. This is the other mitigation here. Um, and so I didn't take this trade, obviously, because I'm looking for more confirmation, seeing if price if prices can continue bullish. You can see prices are making bullish 
uh, bullish sentiment here. There's a chalk, obviously. We could have taken this buy here. Um, we haven't yet. We were just still scoping to see if price can do something here for us. If price can continue bullish. Prices went bullish, breaking above this high, which is a beautiful trade. Um, and then, um, and then what I did was I used my um, my tool, my Fibonacci tool. Obviously, you can see that 50% marked here. I went from the low from the high here. And then uh, two things came in my mind. I was like, okay, the prices, prices need to retrace. And the reason why they need, they need to retrace is they need to close this last sell, okay, if prices need to continue bullish here. Um, and then the second thing was, okay, well, I know price may not continue bullish, extreme bullish here. Um, well, and I thought, thought about this. When price did this, like this, I was like, okay, I know price needs to come and mitigate this, and we're going to buy here, no doubt about that. But I know price isn't going to break right above here. It's not going to continue higher only because if you understand how to, uh, if you understand the 50% equilibrium line, prices need to come and fill in the 50%, right? There's there's buyers and sellers that always at the 50%, right? So prices haven't tapped here, and therefore I didn't, um, I knew, I speculated this trade, I knew that price should not go above this high. Therefore, I'm going to tap in here like this, like right, I, like I did this right here, and I stayed in this trade and only targeted this high here, and I was out, completely out, only because price hasn't tapped in this uh, 50%. So once this happened, price reversed like this, and I was like, all right, cool. So I see that price needs to be retracing fully. And if there's a buy here, I'm going to look for pretend, for price to potentially show me some bullish momentum here. If it does, I'm going to wait for my rules, wait for my rules to meet, right? And then just wait for buys here. Um, and obviously, um, this is what happened. Price just broke that 50%. I was like, all right, no worries. It's all cool. I know for a fact now, since we have another bullish uh, break over here, right? We're going to look for buys here now completely, only because... There's so much uh, there's so much uh, uh, inefficiency in here, right? Like you can even see it here and here, right? There's inefficiency right there, and right below the inefficiency, inefficiency there's that order block. So I knew for a fact price should get here, and I would buy. Uh, this would be a very uh, a very aggressive uh, buy here. I could have looked for another buy here, as you can see. We had that chalk had that happen here. It's always good to always look for confirmations, and the confirmation is that chalk, right? Uh, as you can see, if you zoom out, everything's bullish here. Nothing is bearish. And we can see that we had that flip in there. And then I was looking to buy there, but I didn't. I don't know what I was doing. I was I was looking at my trade as much as I should have. But um, that would be your other buy right there. Okay. Notice how price just tapped and just goes. I would have bought here and targeted this high here and be out of the this trade and then yeah i think this yeah oh yeah here's another buy actually to be honest look at this here's another high price rejected here and there's a flip so this huge wick here is your buy right and if uh, if i uh, if i was there at that time i could have bought again and then finished obviously at this high and be done now this is how i took my trades right very simple very easy because what i'm trying to do is i'm just following a very systematic order flow. Price is pushing bullish. It's not going bearish at all. We tapped a major demand area right down here, as you can see, right right there. And then, um, so my anticipation was, okay, well, price is going bullish, right? Uh, you can also see that we had a chalk right here. So this also gave me another confirmation that price should be sh prices should be going up. Where exactly? To this supply zone right there, right? And you can see if we zoom out, prices are actually going to that supply zone right there. And there you go. That's where I would have ended my trade. Um, sometimes I don't want to get too carried too old, uh, carried away in terms of where my TP should be or is, uh, especially targeting like the highest supply zone, because I want to make sure I'm safe enough to get enough uh, a good a good amount of TP, meaning a good en a good enough um, you know high or a low. Um, so that's why I don't always try and target like the craziest extreme level of supply or the craziest extreme uh, demand level, right? So I'm just targeting safe zones, safe zones and get in and get out, get my money and get in and get, in and get out, right? And that's it, guys. Uh, this is how I was able to make 37.2% on all these trades. 
uh, let me show you what it looked like. This was a 10.2% trade, right? This was a 5.6%, 10%, 4%, and 7.4%. And this is how you make 37.2% in a day, right? These, this whole, um, this whole, all these trades lasted for about 30 minutes in in uh, in the market. Uh, we this was at uh, 9:32, and we and this ended this trade ended at say 9:57 ish, 9:57. So about 30 minutes or so in the market. All right, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please throw a huge like on this video if you if you found it helpful. Also, please leave some comments on the on uh, you know the comment section below. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Um, I would also love for you guys to subscribe to this channel because all we do is give out free content. Uh, guys, I will see you later.